Broadcasting from the depths of outer space. Hello, I'm alive. I don't know what's going on. This is episode 25 of the Solar One Sci Fi podcast. Michael Ball, Martin Fowler, again uh, with another show, catching up with talking about science fiction and uh, basically having a good time. Hello, Martin, how are you? Hello, yeah, it's like the Silver Jubilee, isn't it? 25 years to 25 episodes, I think it's great. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. Um, I I was actually um, quite surprised at just how quickly the shows have mounted up. But it's uh, it's been a real pleasure doing this, and we are planning on doing lots of things. Actually, we, yes. we were talking off air about some things we've got planned for the future, which I don't think we're going to share just yet. But uh, you'll find out that there's going to be some new segments and all sorts of things coming along. So uh, that should be interesting. Yes, but we will be saying bye bye to an old friend today. We will. Um, we'll tell you what's happening. We're going to have. Oh, he's 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 being he's, made he's, he's, Yes, he's basically. <laughs> So basically, it's all the, the coronavirus has affected him. Bless him. It's the one thing that yes. stops him. It's uh, we are. T- <laughs> it's only going to be. It's not indefinite, but for the for the short term at least, we're going to um, have a different se- uh, segment from the Predator verses. Um, we thought yeah. after twenty five exactly. weeks, twenty five Predator verses <laughs> from Pat Butcher to Marvin the Paranoid Android to Dave yes. Lister's Curry. Um, we feel that um, uh, he's going to have a break, but he will return. This is only, we're just trying to sort of um, shake things up a bit and uh, sort of uh, introduce some different things. So we won't elaborate as to what that will be yet because we're still talking over, but it should be very interesting. So that should be good. But we've got one more, and apparently it's going to be Predator versus Rambo. So um, that should be interesting. That's so we'll report that. If he loses, he's sacked. That's, that's it. Coming, so we're going to see. This could be it. If Rambo wins, then that's it. This could be the last one forever. So uh, so keep listening in and you'll find out. Um, on the show as well today, we've also got... Um, I've delved into the recent bloopers. Um, <coughs> as people know, I do love the bloopers. and what a, They're not technically all bloopers. They are bloopers stroke funny moments where things just go in a strange tangent. I've always done it for years. Um, uh, technically, with the ones on this show and the ones on the last show I did, the whole collection now lasts over nine hours. So um, you can see I'm a, a person who likes to uh, find the comedic moments in podcasting. Um, and I think Martin's um, had a few gems. Although, Martin, I will say some of these I do steal from your um, Martin Sci-Fi Appeal YouTube. Yeah, you quite a few. And you, but they are some funny ones as well. So it's a mix of both. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, so before we move on, first of all, how have you been? What's been the latest with you up in London? Uh, well, I'm going out next week. I'm meeting a friend in a park. I know that sounds so bloody <laughs> on it. Oh, that's a well, well I'm, I'm meeting a friend and, uh, uh, well, well, obviously we'll have to go sit in a park and have a coffee. Okay. Yeah, you know, so that's either Tuesday or Thursday. I'm actually uh, involved uh, with a community group on Zoom. Okay. Uh, the Good the good Vibes Collective. Uh, and I'm doing an interview tomorrow. Uh, with one of them and she said she's getting some her friends a reality star or something and she's coming on and we're going to interview her on Zoom we're going to talk about people uh, benefit rights and where they stand when this is over legally and that I'm going to ask questions and 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 she's a, a disability lawyer right and so we're going to so we'll do it on Thursday we're doing it yeah it's the first one but she's got this friend she's been on uh, exes on the beach or something okay no, I don't know. I don't know, but she's been on one of them programs. So she's coming on as well. So I, I will post it to my YouTube channel. Yeah, if it happens yeah. Tomorrow. Okay, I'd like to check that I, out. It should be interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's something new, something yeah. new for you to do, and obviously it's it's quite fun. It's strange how a lot of people are doing um, uh, online things. It's like quite funny because. Um, I got uh, I upset a, a Facebook group the other day. I won't say what they are, but they focus on unusual TV shows uh, in the eighties. And um, I posted one recently, which was Rent a Ghost, which we mentioned, and we'd love to do a show of that. And that got a, yeah, about eight hundred. But yeah. I I said I also then put another one. I said, uh, Do you remember the Crankies? But what I did was because I thought it would be funny is that I recently, and it was just a joke. It's nothing, but it's just it was just my Photoshop skills. I changed Jimmy Cranky to uh, Nicholas Sturgeon 
And um, I just thought it'd be funny. And people would think, oh, look. And I, they all got very upset. They all said, why are you putting your political views on this page? Why are you doing that? What are you? And I thought to myself, it was just a bloody joke. It wasn't anything. It's was just to give people a laugh. So um, it's funny when you go into new things how sometimes you could inadvertently offend people, which was never my attention. It was just my humour. So um, I hope you have more luck yeah, with but, your new thing. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, she does, she does look like I him. I didn't know that. I didn't she, realise she that. She does look like Jim. And, and people have been saying that for the last couple of years. I, I, I didn't realise that. She looks like Jimmy Grant. I only heard about it. So that's why I did it. I th- it was just to give people a laugh. And it's just amazing how precious some people are about certain things. It was just a joke. It was just a joke. So in the end, I took the post off and I actually... Um, I deleted my account with them, so <laughs> they won't be getting any more <laughs> posts from me because I just thought if people are that serious when it's just a joke about an image, when people are sending funny images of things all the time on your respective Facebook groups, then there really is some people out there with a with a raw sense of humour bypass. Let's put it that way. And I was quite shocked. Uh, I read that. I saw one of your posts on the film uh, pages. Uh, <clears throat> you said you thought Batman vs Superman. Oh, was absolute... I, you know what? I knew that you'd read that. I knew that you were a big fan I did, of that. I, I, wasn't, I didn't even leave a like. I was, I was, no. I was shocked. I'm sorry. I was in shock. I'm, I'm so okay. sorry. I'm, I know. You probably, well, it's, I hope it didn't ruin your day. <laughs> I'm not a big it fan did. of that film. Yeah, my I, I, whole life stuff. Oh. I saw it and it froze. And that's just the last that's, 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 that's why this is our last show because uh, that's it. It's not, 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 I'm not co hosting <laughs> with this man who's. Uh, um, I just, it, you know, in the end. I, I didn't like it and some people said it was I, it just didn't work for me I mean like I said I'm not so much of a and I even put on the post about hashtag Marvel Virgin I don't know if you saw that as well because that's uh, that's the thing um, I, I know it's not Marvel but I'm not a bigger superhero fan as, as other elements in science fiction and I just never liked the film we should actually do that at some point we could actually have a very good debate about the pros and cons of <coughs> Batman versus Superman so maybe at have, some have point have you seen Justice League? No, I've not seen many of these things actually. Um, I've seen uh, the only no. thing I've seen from Marvel is that um, uh, what's that uh, um, Metal Man thing? Uh, and it's um, oh god, I know he's in the Marvel That's things. Just... The one, the man who dresses up in the suit, and he um, I can't remember what's called. What the man who dresses <laughs> up no, in no, the no. suit? <laughs> All right, no. uh, it's it's a mechanical thing. He's like a millionaire. And it's got this round oh, crystal. Oh, Iron Man! Iron Man! Iron Man! Couldn't think of the name. I saw that. I thought that was all right. Actually, I saw. That. I thought that the first one. That was okay. Oh, what? What? Well, the first one. Iron all Man. Right. All right. All you, right. You didn't like that. What? You like that? You didn't like it's that? It's one of the greatest films ever made. Oh, you Iron liked Man it? One Star. It's a masterpiece. Well, it's all right. I didn't dislike it. Oh! oh. You do an incredible Hulk impression. <laughs> No, yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, I, I, I am a, look. I, I don't mean to be awful, I'll, but I'll the see remake it. of the Hulk movie was terrible. Oh yeah, I agree. I, I think both any, I, of them. I don't like any of the Hulk remakes at all. But then I, I only like my beloved 1978 version with Bill Bixby, as you all know. Hey, we could do TV Hulk. We could do TV Hulk versus everybody. Oh, oh no, because he just roars and stuff. No, he's too much like the Predator. <laughs> Except, except he's thicker. He's a bit thicker. And he's, I've got this no. picture of you in my back garden, looking out of my bedroom window, and I'm seeing you on the morning sticking a ten pound note and stealing <laughs> clothes off a of what? When you told me that the other week, I kept I, thinking, I, I could fo- is he out there somewhere? I could Photoshop myself as halfway like the. Um, it- Turning into the Incredible Hulk or something, I could do that. I could do you could turn into Incredible Hulk if you want. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. I'd never be that. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Leave me alone. So, um, what are we talking about now? <coughs> we're talking about oh yeah, Batman versus Superman. So yeah, I wasn't a big fan yeah. of that, um, and I guess it's just I just didn't click with it. But that's just me. If you like it, and other people on that thing, they all said you know some people said that it was terrible. Some people said they liked it. I think it's one of those films that you either, a bit like Marmite, you either like it or loathe it. It's a Marmite. I, I it's thought, not a Marmite. I thought it was very good. You've got to watch Justice League, which is the sequel to it. It's not. It's like um, it's like a Marvel. It's like Marmite film. So, but I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't know. Like I said. Um, well, I watched. I watched the latest DC film last night. They've released. I rented it on Amazon because I thought I could buy it. So I ended up renting it. I watched it last night. I didn't know what to make of it. Actually. It was Harley Quinn and the, the Birds of Prey, uh, the emancipation of Harley Quinn. It, was, it started off all right for the first time, and then it just 
I don't know what, what happened. It just went. It just went totally, utterly stupid. You what know, about it um, didn't bomb at, it? Didn't bomb at the cinema. I mean, you know, just Margaret Robbie running around with a short, tight stuff on. You know. Well, it can't be all that bad then. No, it wasn't <laughs> that bad. But it was meant to be about this team of super women uh. in Gotham City, and it had. It had. It had I just gave up on it towards the end. I was like, well, they're oh. not the birds of prey. No. Who were they? And I, I also saw um, Hardware recently. Um, oh, God, no. And that, that was I, terrible. You know, that's a cult classic, is that, you know? I thought it was shite. I thought it was terrible. Well, I, what's well, famous about that film is years ago, when it was me, I think it was late 80s. Yeah, 1990, I think. It was. Funny. It got. It got financing. It was one of the first films to get financing for it, and it was like a student production. Or but it was, it was I British. Think it was British, though. It, it looked. Yeah, it, it looked was. like it was American, but it was British. It was a really weird yeah, film. It was, it was awful. I thought it was a terrible film. It, it was. It, they got funding for. It. I think Channel Four banged a few quid into it as well, and they released it on video. I remember SF, all like Star, uh, these magazines. They all made a big thing about this movie. Yeah. And it come out on video. I remember they had a. a there was a cinema in Leeds. They had a night for it. You know, well, you know, like a promotional thing. I, I couldn't get ticket. I'm glad I did. Anyway, finally it come out on video, and I watched it. And I thought, my God, this is shit. It really was. It was terrible. It, it was terrible. It, it was. I, and I thought, yeah, when is this finishing? But apparently it's a cult classic. And I did, oh, totally disagree. No, I never clipped it at all. I think Alec Cox put it on as well. I think he put it on. Oh, did he? What? Did he like it? I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. But I will find that. Yeah, I'd like to look though. at some reviews. But I, I thought it was absolute crap. I thought it was terrible. And it's like that, that, that neighbour that's got, got, got the sort of telescope and he's sort of like jerking off looking at the woman through the window and then he's... It was awful. It was... T- <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that bit? No. And then, and then he ends, no, in the end he dies. And the, um, oh, and then the robot sort of comes to wow. life. and it's, uh, Why? It was why terrible. That? Well, that's a bit I, I remember. Did. And then he eventually gets killed and then... Because she's got like... The guy finds a helmet and a few bits of metal and a metal hand and it suddenly... It starts to come alive. And somebody said it's... Um, somebody said on the um, Facebook, they said, they thought it was better than the Terminator. What? What? They thought it was better than the Terminator. <coughs> the Terminator is oh, one of the most defining do. cult classic science fiction films of all time. One of the, my yeah, top, yeah. top ten yeah, films yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything about yeah, it. Definitely. And they said that the hardware was better than the Terminator. Are they crazy? Oh, come on. Come on, so, come on, what on are they on? Didn't smoking? even get a cin- it didn't even get a proper cinema Absolute release. Crap. Didn't even- he went straight to video. Everybody thought it was shit. It was shit. And 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 just because he got a few good words from a couple of sci-fi writers. Look, I remember one sci-fi columnist back in the in eighties said Black Hole were better than Star Wars. Oh, I don't mind Black I'm Hole, pretty, but I, 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 Black Holes. We'll have to cover that. Yeah, I like Black Hole, but I mean, no, it's not. It's nothing compared to Star. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous as well. That's a ridiculous. No, but, but I don't dislike I think... Black Hole. I don't dislike Black Hole. No, but it's no, not. It's not. It's not the, the now, not on the heights of Star Wars, though, is it? No, but to come say Adworth better than <laughs> Bloody Terminator. Yeah, I, I, I you I know just, somebody oh. said that to me. I kick off. I, 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 you come on, are you kidding me? Yeah, but I don't. What it is, I don't want to because it's because it's like a Facebook group and stuff. If you, it's you know, it's a bit difficult. If it's your own group, if you ran it. Um, then you'd have more of control and stuff, but uh, no, I just thought well, yeah, whoever I, I, put I, I, that. Everybody. If somebody said that to me, they'd be banned. Yeah, well, I just think that's crazy. I have to find it. I see if I can find it. Why yeah. did you? What made you watch out? What made you um, go to that? I, I literally, I've been looking for films which I've not seen before because I've got so much time on my hands. So I, I, I what happened was I often go to YouTube's and they say like the, the top ten sci-fi films of the 1980s or the 1990s. I go through that from time to time and look at people's recommendations and what i try to do is not look too much at the reviews because i especially in recent years reviews tend to be so uh off from the way i see things so i like to see a film from my own perspective and see whether i like it or not and in, and going back to the superman versus batman thing in the end we're all different we all like something about the film um yeah, and, and you know what i mean so um Somebody on YouTube said, oh, hardware, this film. And it, you look at it, and it's got quite a cool poster. And it, the, the helmet does look a bit like a T-800 Terminator. And, you know, and it just looked like... It, I like the time period, so I thought, let's give it a go. And, of course, it's the biggest waste of an hour and a half of my life I've ever done. 
So um, I blame YouTube. I think it, it, it's one of the worst. It, 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 it's it's terrible. It's yeah. absolutely. It's it's one of the worst films ever made. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, unfortunately, it was a bit of a hashtag fail for hardware. So um, if anybody's listening to this and thinking about um, renting out or getting a copy of hardware from wherever, um, I would suggest. And we're on, um, both agree, save your time because it's absolute um, shite. And um, there's plenty of other good films to watch. Br- replay The Terminator because it's a lot more fun. I, I recommend a good film from the 80s with Rudger Hauer. It's a, bit, it's a cult one. I don't know if it's, it's a bit of a horror one. It's weird. It is set in like a Blade Runner-esque world with a demon. It's called Split Second. Nope, not seen that. I, li- I, I like recommend- Rudger Hauer, though. I recommend it. Because he, yeah, he only died. In, I was going to say. It's set in London, right. the future. And the, well, it's sort of like this like depressing sort of future, but there's this demon running around eating people. And and the cat accepts it. It's like the same future. Like there's there's no money in that. It, it's, from what I can remember, it's, it's a bloody good film, actually. Yeah. I think it only got to video, I think. But it was one of them, you pick up at video library back in day and you thought, well, this is bloody good. Yeah. It's, it's not a film. I mean, there's not a big budget on it, but I'll tell you something, it wipes the flaw with hardware. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's strange. I mean, it's like I saw recently, well, not recently, I saw it a long time ago, I never forgot it, I saw a film called Free Jack with Mick Jagger. Do you, have, do you ever see Free Jack and Mick Jagger? Oh, God, uh, with uh, Martin Sheen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was uh, quite good. I quite like that. He's a racing car driver. I see and yeah. he gets frozen in time and he gets transported to the future. Uh, so Anthony Hopkins, who runs a corporation, can take over his body because everybody's been infected by pollution. And Mick Jagger drives an armoured vehicle chasing him around. Yeah. Did yeah, you like that? That's, I've not seen that in years. I, it's a book. I've read the book years ago. It's a fantastic film, that. Yeah, I've got a copy of it. I've got to do the watch. Um, but, God, um, it, actually, Mick Jagger's not that bad in that, actually. He's called, he's got a name. It's called Point Decker or something. Yes, that's right. And I thought it was quite good. Yeah, I thought that was a bloody good film because I, I ran it down video and I, yeah. and I thought, this ain't bad, this, actually. Never forgot it's it. And I, I never forgot it. And I suddenly sort of like... Um, uh, so, oh, I found a th- YouTube uh, post about hardware. The one, let's see what I put. Let's have a look. I won't give names, obviously, but some of the comments. <coughs> let's have a look because it was quite funny. But yeah, Free Jack's good. Um, I recommend um, checking that out. It's, I, I, I saw it a long time ago. I never forgot it. So that normally is a good sign um, that it's good. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you're, yeah. remember, you, you remember it if it's absolute crap like uh, hardware, but you also remember it if it's really good. And I remember hard, um, that was good. Um, let's have a look. Let's, let's just see what it says. Some people are saying that they liked hardware because it had some good music in it, which I don't mind the music. Um, let's have a look. So, so it was based apparently on uh, Future Shocks from 2000 AD. Apparently, it's to, to do because you're into comics and stuff. It has some relevance uh, to 2000 yeah. AD. Um, yeah, right, yeah. Let's have a look. Um, uh, somebody says, "Great low budget film. Anything with Karl McCoy is always good. To, going to be good." No. Um, just as, uh, somebody says I liked it claustrophobic and tense no it wasn't uh, somebody else says yes it was died looked good though at first yeah somebody says oh yeah I love hardware and it stands up today gotta to bear in mind that he was an art student at the time and had to blag everything on less than a shoestring budget but, yeah but it was terrible it wasn't well written <sighs> uh, it had an Iggy Hop Look in it girl, uh, I watched it back in the day and I was young and I thought it was a complete utter pile of shit it did have Iggy but Hop yet, in again, it but yeah again you do get these people that uh, that st- uh, put a, uh, like this thing on a movie where it's like an intellectual it, it's like this thing it's like this masterpiece of science fiction it's not shit yeah and I say that it's shit and somebody and I'm going to say it one more time <laughs> It's shit. And I will say, I won't give the person a name, somebody said, I actually wrote this on the reply, <coughs> said, loved this more than Terminator. <laughs> they actually loved it more than the Terminator. And they'll be one of these sci-fi, you get these like people that are like, uh, not all the time, but you get sci-fi connoisseurs. Yeah. And I've, I've met them, the real wankers, some of them. And they, they praise movies like this, oh, yeah, you, but you've not seen the aesthetics of it. and the Yeah. The... the Hang on, I've got a phone call. Oh, oh okay. Hello? Please, 
Please stand by, everybody. Oh, yes. Hang, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I'm online. Uh, yeah, go on. All right. Cheers, love. Stay safe. Bye. Sorry about that. That's uh, fine. Uh, Don't uh, worry about that. Uh, bloody decorators. And, and Well, we're, co- we're coming round to decorate your house. I said, well, yeah. Uh, get- so I said, right then, so you're coming out of deck. I said, what about the carpets you're meant to be doing? She said, oh, we're, we're looking at that now. So right. looks like I'm going to be getting, well, finally going to get decorated and get my new carpets in. Oh, good for so you. I can buy my new sofa then. I'm sick of this. Yeah, well, you've got you to... Because idiot, idiot neighbour upstairs, he flooded me out, you see. Oh, really? I, I've been cursed with floods for about a year. Where, where I was living before... I had a garden, I went downstairs, but I had an open plan flat, it was like a modern one. Right. It was all open plan. Well, the pipes blew, so they had to move me and five others out of the building, but they've not done it up, you see, because I'm in the house, I'm under not in the housing. <coughs> so they moved me into here, which was meant to be like, so, for about six, but they're not, what, they're not doing the other building, I don't know what's going on. Oh, but, God. So I've got this bad man upstairs, he's a nice, he's old. But he, he forgot to turn tap off twice. Oh, Christ. And I got flooded out. Oh, my God. So, so yeah, I went out. I went out. I come in. Neighbor downstairs contacted him. He flooded us both out. He'd, he'd been on for 10 hours, you know. So how could he let the tap and on? It, it, well, he, well, he, well, he was just sat there watching telly. Oh, God. But, but, well, no, water all around him because oh. I went ballistic and I went up there. And at first, I was going to, you know, kick off at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he's not all there, is he? Well, well he doesn't sound uh, it. He's a lovely old, he's a lovely fella. But is he a bit he, senile he, or something? Is he a bit kind I of I think like, so, you know, yeah. Quite, well, yeah. they were going to, they were going to, obviously, because of his head, they were going to rehouse him, you know, and put him in a place where he was going to, but they can't now, with what's going on. No, well. You well, know, well, and yeah. all he's can't, so he's got to stay up there until they get the word to move him out. So, so all the money I spent when I moved in, I've, I've, got, I've got it all back, but I, I booked in a, uh, people to come and do it and then they come and said we'll pay for it all so I've got the money but now they're organising it mm. and they're coming out on 5th of June to sell it out I mean so things are fine I can now I can finally get my new sofa and get all this stuff off the walls and get it all redone I'm so bloody so I just got all the glass cabinets I've just finished building them right and they're all set up in corner but I'm going to have to I can't buy it because I don't want to move it all out you know, no. but I keep telling you, you've got to sort the hallway out as well. It's like, no, but we just got one more. No, you need to sort the fucking hallway out. <gasps> you know. Well, like, some of that. Good job. Some of that has been added to the show. I mean, what I'll do is when you take the call, I'll do a fade out and then obviously come in once you've, you've finished your call. But um, yeah, like I said, sorry about the hassles. At least um, then it sounds like you're making yeah, progress. Yeah. So. Well, don't forget this. Every time we sort of do a podcast, uh, one of us gets a phone. Call. Yeah, I know. Well, that's all right. That's fine. I mean, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that bit yeah. of the explanation because yeah. um, in the end, it's nice for people to know a, bit, a little bit about our respective lives, I think. So uh, yes. in the end, we're not robots. So um, good luck with that, matey. Good luck. Yes, um, yes, yes. I look right, shall we just see if there's any solo, solo, uh, solo on sci-fi news? Let's hit the jingle and see if there's anything. Yeah, I've got quite there. a bit, yeah. Okay, here we go. Working. Yeah, so, let's see. Solo sci-fi news. Solo sci-fi news. Solo sci-fi news. Right, Martin, what do you got for us? <coughs> right, uh, a quick one. I know you're not into this. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. I watched it three times. Thought it was shit. Uh, Ruby Rose is exiting Batwoman. Good. I uh, won't we'll, we'll be watching that again. Getting a new Batwoman. Okay. So that I should actually leave him, but there's obviously other reasons behind it. Right. Uh, Miller confirms Furio's the sequel It's uh, Mad Max, oh. the last one uh, with Charlie's Ferron. Right. Yeah, so they do. You know the lady character in the truck. I don't know if you've seen the new Mad Max. I, I, yeah, I, I saw the original years and years ago with Mel Gibson, um, but I don't remember that. The much remake, about it. the remake was very good. Okay, all right, that's cool. It's very good. Even though my best friend didn't like it, but it's very good. So yeah, they're doing. It's about one of the characters is getting her own film from that. Okay, but there is some exciting news that I'm very excited about. Uh, We've got Space Force, the TV series. It's been advertised on Netflix. Is that... I, that's the one with uh, Steve Carroll, isn't it, from The Office? 
Yes, I yes. like the look of that. A bit of a comedy. He's an idiot, generally. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was, I was a big fan of The Office. I've got, I've seen every episode of the American version. I thought he was very good in it, although he wasn't in the last couple yes. of seasons. Um, I just hope it's not going to be another Avenue Five, which I thought was a big disappointment. But yeah, it looks good yeah, so far. I, I, I dropped that. I dropped I, it as well. Somewhere I've been by episode four. I got fed up of it. I think I watched about I was, seven, and I just thought this is just not oh. working for me. And uh, it, you know. I like sci-fi and I like comedy, but it just didn't work for me. I just didn't find it. I just didn't like it. I didn't pick it. Up. Don't know why. And Hugh Laurie was oh. in it. Uh, but go on. What's your other bit? The the big news is uh, oh, we're no. getting Hot Fuzz too. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Simon Hot Pegg. Fuzz. Yeah, I like I like Hot yeah, Fuzz. Yeah, yeah. Sam Pegg. I've got it in front of me now. I love Hot Fuzz. I like uh, Sam Pegg. Edgar writes Hot Fuzz the second entry in the Cornetto trilogy with Shaun of the Dead and World's End. I love World's End. And today's staff World's Sam End is really says, funny. Would love to surprise you. Nick I was going to say, the World's yeah, End is the best it, one. Yeah, I love I the World's End. Yeah, I think you can relate to it. Yeah, I really do. Um, I think you can relate to that. You see yourself in them characters. Yeah, I, they're, I they're, they're very normal. Very normal. In. Very normal, sort of down to earth. I like the way he's still got his uh, old cassette deck in his car. And he's like, uh, he's got like a full Capri <laughs> or something. <laughs> And he goes, and he's got the same tape that he had from 1985. And it's, it's it, it's it, no, it's the same tape. It was funny. It was a very good film. I liked it. Yes. It got a bit so weird we're getting, the, we're getting the sequel. Good. That's good. Um, now, this uh, time this time last week, did we announce that the next Star Trek series has been officially announced? Was it? Did we talk about it last week? It's now official. Uh, this morning, I lost it. I did, uh, we're getting a new McCoy. Oh, I didn't hear read about that. I, I heard about a new <laughs> Kirk. I had it all set up and then I accidentally removed it. But oh, that's a shame. They said this morning it's official that we're getting a McCoy. So that means I think we're going to get a Scotty as well. Uh, well, we don't know when. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, though, um, this is. Now, let's, let's get this right. This will be set after the cage, but before when no, one has, when no man has gone before, isn't it? It's in between. It's seven years before he ends up in the wheelchair. And in. Right. And which was obviously in the Menagerie two parts in the original yes. Star Trek. Uh, now the Cage episode itself. Now that was set something like wasn't that eleven years before Captain Kirk was the captain of the Enterprise? Isn't that yeah, right? he got a good ten years on the Enterprise, didn't he? Yeah, Pike. so and uh, it got quite a while. And how long is Discovery? Now we've seen Pike. When when I assume that this would be after the episodes that we saw Pike. On Discovery. Discovery's ten years before Kirk. So it's only about a year after the cage in, um, happened in the original. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so is this going to be like a jump for a couple of years after the Discovery episodes? I don't know. I don't know. It'll be it's close. Got, but it's set, It'll be close. It's set It'll be close. seven years before he ends up in the wheelchair. Yeah. Well, what, so well, we're I mean, going to get a full five-year mission at least. And I, what I've heard is that they uh, they've listened to the, the the fans and they're going to make this. It's going to be the episodes are going to be quite standalone with like an overall arc. And I think it will, it sounds to me like it'd be like a season of Doctor Who or something where you've got standalone episodes where there's something going yeah. on, uh, which is, I love that. I think that'd be brilliant. Um, and uh, the Federation is going to be quite positive as well. Yeah. And um, please, please drop the F-bombs. Can we make it so that everyone, everyone in the family can watch yeah. it, please? Um, I hope that. Um, I'm very excited about that. I, I really wish... I think- they could just get on with making it now, and everything's still in the hole. But this is really good. All the actors about Ethan Peck uh, and Sam Mount, who I thought were very good in their respective roles in Discovery. They were the highlight for me on season two of Discovery. Uh, Rebecca Romjian. Yes, as that's cool. number one. She was good. Yeah. yeah, she was good as well. So I'm really pleased. This is excellent news. Yeah. Um, this is Star Trek. We're talking. We're going to get Star Trek now. I mean, proper Star Trek. Yeah. Right about. Yeah, and that's what we want. We yeah. want it. And he's exploring. the right man for it. He's got that personality for it. Whoa, yeah. He seems a, you know, you, but I saw, I know you've met him, but uh, I saw he did a live thing on uh, Facebook and he, he, he thanks everybody. Oh, he, and he's a huge Star Trek Thank fan as well. You made my yeah, dream yeah, yeah, much. yeah. I, I think he's going to be so good. He was so good in Discovery. Um, and I'm really going to miss him. But of course, Discovery's doing its own thing now for the season three. So, yeah, very, very positive news. I'm very, very pleased yeah, about he, it. He did a TV series for Disney called The Inhumans, you know. Oh, did he? And uh, it, it was meant to be, well, it was going to be one of MCU movies. And uh, they did 10 or 12 episodes. And everybody got excited. It's based on this comic. And the main character, Blackbot, don't talk. Because if he talks, he can blow up a mountain. Okay. Right. So, 
to, and seriously, I'm not making this up. They live on this city on the moon. Right. And uh, he didn't talk at all in it. He was in it. He was, he was, he was like the main character, but he never spoke. And seriously, I can't believe it's him, but it is him, you know. And uh, he's a bloody good. I mean, to do that and express communication without talking, yeah, he's a yeah, bloody yeah. good. I know he also worked with Colin Meaney, who played obviously O'Brien on Deep Space Nine in a series. So they've worked together oh, in right. the past. Yeah, he worked with him for something. So they're mates. Um, so I think he actually asked um, uh, Colin for uh, advice about being on Star Trek and stuff because uh, obviously Colin worked years before um, um, Anson did on uh, Discovery. So I always like it when you hear fans or actors who have uh, been on other things when they end up on Star Trek. I always like that. So the Kelvin universe, again, I mean, the origins in the first movie that him and Kurt signed up together. And McCoy and Kurt, they, you know, they went through Academy together, didn't they, and all that. Yeah. You know, but I, obviously, so it's looking like that McCoy served under Pike and uh, it's look, it looking like a horror comes on board as well. So they were all on the ship before him. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's a different timeline, so you can argue yeah, I know, that... Um, but it, that's what I like about that. that a lot of that crew I didn't nobody could, he, they're making it he must have come on board by himself now then like he was the later after Pike had his accident he got the command yeah well, but the crew that, might have must have been there like you know well they'll have to explain how Kirk because Kirk was on the Farragut um, yes he was so yeah. they'll have to explain why unless it's like um, they do a similar discovery thing where um, Pike t- takes temporary command of the discovery maybe there's some reason why Kirk is temporarily transferred or it could be we don't know when he transferred from the Farragut onto the Enterprise so it could actually f- fit with canon well, to be honest I don't think they should bring Kirk into it really. I don't either I don't mean, I, I think I'm I hoping think I'm hoping he'll be like a, I don't know if he's going to be a main character or maybe a recurring or a guest thing it would um, got to have him in final season that would make but to bring him in now in the early days, I, I, you, they've got to establish Captain Pike. I think it's all it, rumor. I, I'm not. I'm not too. Yeah. I, I think at the moment that's rumor. I think that at the moment we know it's going to be Ethan Peck, Anson Mount, and it's not, yeah. get the three. That get those three there. Um, and so, I, but what about Scotty? Is he on the ship? I because he's, he's he's been in Starfleet for oh, years. Do you know he's what? Older than do you know what they got? It, do you know what they should do if they get Scotty in this series? And they should do. Although he might be a bit older, get Chris Doohan from Continues. As Scotty, yeah, yeah, that's what they should do. It would be yeah. fantastic, and he actually age-wise, he'd probably be about right because Scotty was older yeah. in the original series. It was so, older, yeah, it was so there. could we get away with Chris? Could, could, could Chris do him do it? I think he. I, I think well, he could. Simon Pegg did it, didn't they? So, Simon, I mean, and, you know. and I like Simon Pegg's Scotty as well. So um, yeah, I mean, well, that, I mean, they probably wouldn't do that because of the uh, the fan thing. But I think that would please a lot of fans if the actual son of James Doohan. Um, appeared as uh, a younger Scotty in um, uh, in uh, the Strange New World series. So, yeah, um, brilliant stuff. Very excited I've, about that. Uh, the Vada poll on Ranker Watch. Well, this is what it's called. This website. It's not. It's, it's not Wanker. It's Ranker. Oh, I think it's a Wanker. Ranker, it's called Ranker <laughs> Wanker. Watch com. Worthy, right? Okay, go on. Ranker. Right. Rank, uh, right. Uh, <gasps> the best. It's the best uh, 30 sci-fi TV series ever made. I'm only going to do the top five because it'll be easier. Okay. Uh, at number five, Star Trek, the original series. Yeah. This is all the greatest sci-fi series ever made. Okay. At number four, this is uh, what they're saying, you know, obviously. Stargate SG-1. Yeah, well, I love that. I love uh, Stargate SG-1. Number three, The Next Gen. Yeah. Two Battlestar Galactica. Um, Which one? Uh, number one. Uh, the new one. The okay. Remake. Right. I could see that being in top ten, but I won't put it yeah, in top ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's number one? Uh, Doctor Who, uh, I suppose. Uh, uh, no, Firefly. What? Uh, I can find out what uh, Firefly. Uh, Doctor Who's number seven. Oh well, I, I saw that. I'm going to watch Firefly. It's done for a future show. Um, I I thought Star it was okay. Trek DS9. DS9. Which I'm not. DS9 should be right up there. Well, really, what they should... X-Files, thanks, Doctor Who. Uh, I, I like the X-Files, but I don't think... No, I don't think it's good as Doctor Who. Not for what Stargate it's done. Stargate Atlantis in the top ten, but it and, uh, is at number nine. And at uh, number ten, this is a bloody insult. The Twilight Zone, black and white. Oh. 
I, I, uh, no wonder this is called the Wanker Ranker site. Wanker Ranker, yeah, it is a Wanker Ranker. Yeah, well, I think I'll give that a miss. Then no. we've got that wrong. Yeah. Oh, what? Well, okay. Have, it, have, what's your sort of ten? What would you say? Can you off the cuff think about your top top ten in order or roughly what you'd count as the best shows ever? Uh, uh, I'd, 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 I'd put in UFO as my all-time favourite. Start at the original series, <coughs> followed by Deep Space Nine, Stargate Atlantis, and Doctor Who. Yeah, and then uh, definitely Firefly at number six. You know, I, I got to think for the classics and the Invaders at number seven. Uh, but that's my choice. What I would know. do, I would actually, I would put all the Star Treks as in one entity rather than yeah, actually, because I, think cause I don't think that's idea. fair. Yeah. I don't think that's fair. So I would probably put Star Trek at number one, all of them, rather than just specifics. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah. Number two would probably have to be Doctor Who, all of them. Again, new and old. Um, yes. Number three would be Stargate, all of them. Number four. What would be my fourth? Um, that's a tough one because they're my top ones. I'm trying to think what would be number four. That's a hard. Um, Red Dwarf would be high up there because I think Red Dwarf, although it's more comedy, it's still I still rate it very highly. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, it, it, I, it definitely in the top ten for me, Red Dwarf. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, after those four, really, any other of this, the, uh, the six I'm going to mention Babylon. would be. Babylon 5, I wouldn't. I, I like Babylon 5, but yeah. I've, I, although it's a classic, I never click with it as much as I, I should have done. So I would probably put in my other six would be The Outer Limits, the 90s version, because I love that. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I'd have to mention The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> so, yeah, no, you're allowed that. You're allowed that. You're allowed it. As much as I'm pulling a face right uh, now, well, I'm sorry, you're allowed I'm sorry, Thank you. Uh, I would also mention Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap mm. very highly as well. Yeah. Um, would you rate Farscape? I can't. I can't until I've probably viewed it all. So yeah. that, that is pending a full review. Uh, Expanse is up there as well. Quite frankly, I, yeah. I, I like Expanse a lot as well. Um, that's most of the ones I, I like. The X Files. Uh, but I've not seen that all either because it's a big series. I quite like Lost. I like the new Battlestar yeah, Galactica. I like the old Battlestar Galactica as well. Although it's um, it's it's strange that series because it started off so well, <laughs> but it, it fizzled out. It sort of um, it it lost its direction. But if it if it, if it had started off as it had done, it might have been higher. But I like bat- the uh, bat- Battlestar Galactica, new and old versions as well. Uh- yeah, I, I think I think it changes weekly for me. Yeah, I was going to say it does fluctuate. I mean, like I said, the Doctor Who, Star Trek, Stargate are uh, my top yeah. three. Um, and after that, really, it's hard to to say because uh, well, they they were the ones you got excited about, weren't they? Yeah, exactly. Um, wrong. And of course, um, Doctor Who and Star Trek technically are still running, and Stargate is lost in the wilderness somewhere. It's uh, it's uh, and it's the biggest mystery for me because that is uh, a money maker which is yeah. begging to be tapped, but it doesn't seem to be uh, uh, brought up. So there we go. OK, is there any other news before we go on to our first uh, week? Uh, we've got two bits. Uh, there's a Star Trek Voyager reunion happening. OK. Uh, uh, the, this, have you seen the Lisa Battle Angel? Have they making a sequel? No. no. I've not seen it. I've heard it flopped, but I've heard it's very good. OK. And, oh, yeah, Star Trek Picard... They've learnt lessons from season one and having time to refine a cool season two. Got it in front of me at trekmovie.com. Okay. Yeah, Star Trek began up the first season in March. Title current off to new adventures with the crew, Lara Serene, and our executive producer, Akiva Goldsman, talking about the plans for season two and offering insights into season one. Right, okay. Waiting to start up again for season two. Delay can help make it better. I'm not really that bothered about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm worried about Patrick Stewart being so old. I just wanted, to, I wanted to get over there and get it filmed because he's so old now. Bless him. Um, and like I said, um, after the first season, I'm not. I'm more excited for Discovery actually than Picard season two. And of course, now Strange New Worlds is the one. I'm really underwhelmed. Not be that bothered about Lower Decks, but we'll just have to see what happens when that comes out. Yeah, they're making a. I think they're making a fan movie about Voyager. Oh, okay. Like I mean, a, like the uh, Deep Space Nine one. 
Yeah, well, I, I delved into a couple of um, Star Trek Continues fan episodes this week. And I watched the one with yes. John Delance, where they go to the world where there's no colour. Um, and in the end... Uh, oh, it's fantastic. Oh, and the right... You know, oh, my God, that was a good episode. That was such a clever Genius idea. Genius what they did. I mean... I sat, I thought my mate up straight away. Oh. Have you seen it? He said, I'm watching it right now. So he good. said, one minute they're in colour, then, 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 then it were black and white. I thought, what is... Yeah. No, it was just... Yes, such a clever it idea. Was so unexpected, and it's about racism, and it's about it was that's that's what Star Trek. That was just sci- classic sci-fi. I don't know who wrote that episode, but they deserve a medal for that. Quite, quite frankly, some sort of nomination. you know, it's amazing. You know, it, 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 before we move on, it, it, it's amazing that for fifty grand an episode they did that. I know. Yeah, I can't seven believe it. Million. Seven million on Discovery, and they can't even get it right. No, and Picard with the with the F bomb Romulans and stuff like that, and yeah, yeah, they don't, I, 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 they, don't they don't they don't get it. They don't quite get it. They, I mean, um, you know, the people who did that. I mean, luckily they got most of the episodes they wanted to make out there, which is really good. Um, but I um, think it's an element in production of the new stuff. What they did to Egypt was a big fuck off to his character. Oh yeah. It was. It, what, the, actor, the actual actor, the, I've met him. He's a nice guy. I met him at a convention. He, he's, he, he actually walks about and talks to people. Manny Summers. Really nice guy. And I thought what they did to him, uh, what they did to his character in that first, I thought were a bit, I did well, like a big fuck off to him. Yeah. But apparently he said something a few years ago, which they weren't happy about, apparently. Oh, he appeared in Renegades as well. Back. He appeared in Renegades as the character. Yeah, that, that was off. Yeah, off. Renegades wasn't very good, was it? I didn't think that. They the, um, never made episode two, did they? Uh, they did, but they had to. They had to get rid of all the star Starfleet. The ship changed. They they didn't have the proper Starfleet uniforms. They did. They made um, some subsequent. Oh, did you? I didn't know that. Yeah, they did. They called it like Space Fleet or something. It was. It was definitely. And he still had the um, the um, I can't remember the name, but the their ship that they had, and some of the characters were there, but they. Um, they had to get rid of. It was just when the uh, CBS came down on all the fan films, and they uh, because of Axe now. And I think I think uh, Tim Russ is in it as well, but he, he looks human. Yeah, he, he is. But uh, so he wasn't he wasn't a Volk, He wasn't like Tuvok anymore. So um, yeah, you should check it out. It's it's not very good though. It was it was poor. Uh, have you, uh, before we go, uh, have you seen Axe now? Of course I have. I'm just sick of tired of them I, saying. Oh, we're, going, we're doing another crowdfunder for this crowd. They've been doing these crowdfunders for about 25 years. For, and it's I know, like, for I know. Sake, can I just... they, they, had, they had the crowdfunder last week. I know, I'm fed up with it now. I, 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 I watched it. Can you please donate money? I thought, well, oh, I've when are you going to release like, the full bloody movie? We're all been waiting for that. I know you bought yourself a million pound studio and you're renting it out and no. there's all that scandal with it. But it's... Uh, maybe should I have said that online? Well, no... There's no, no that's, that's, yeah, that's not you. That, that's just well, it, facts. It, that's apparently, fact. he, bought, he, he bought a studio. And he, I don't know. He shouldn't have done That's why Paramount moved on him. Yeah, I know. But I think I think there was a lot more because I think when he was going into that, I've got to admit, with the accident, I think he got it right. Oh, I know. He did get it right. He did and get they it right. can't even do that. They no. even put the original uniforms... If they got it right, and he did that for what two hundred thousand? Yeah. They're spending seven million on on what? Well, they, look, well, they spent on Picard, and uh, well, I think half it went to Picard, uh, Patrick Stewart's salary, quite frankly, and Brent Spiner must have had a bit of expensive fee as well. Oh, um, and John, Riggs. yeah, John, and Marine Assertions as well. So I mean, you know, but like <laughs> I said, I, I'm going to give that series a rewatch. I found it a complete disappointment the first time round, but I, I, I've noticed. Well, I've said this to you recently. I, th- I think I tend to warm a little bit to things on a second viewing. So yes, I, I've yes, definitely, yeah. I've definitely warmed. I, I loved Discovery when I first saw it, but now I'm watching it again. Although it's got a lot of problems, and it's not what I consider Star Trek, I still consider it um, some elements which I, I do quite enjoy, even though I, I just like the Mirror Universe. I, as long as we're there, I'm more interested in that. So. Yeah, but you can get away with a lot more in the Mirror Universe. But I still yeah, think the, the Enterprise two party in the Mirror Darkly was probably one of the best Mirror Universe episodes. It, ever. Uh, yeah, it was fantastic. The best one, the best one. It was. Right. Well, thank you for that, Martin. Um, I think if it's okay with you, we'll move on to our Focus of the Week. Are you yes, ready? Yes, yeah. What Let, is Focus of the Week? I'm going to say, let's hit the jingle and I'll announce it. Here we go. It's the Solar Sci Fi. Focus of the week. Uh, 
All right, so the focus of this week is um, a film which has been remade. I think it also had a recent TV remake, which only lasted one episode, which I saw a while ago. But the... Well, it's had quite a few. It is The Time Machine. Um, now, um, oh, yes. this is a fantastic story based on the H.G. Wells story. Um, and again, H.G. Wells' his things are adapted like all the worlds not like the bbc recent version of course but um we are focused although i want to focus on the original one per se there's also the uh remake done about 10 years ago there's another one with malcolm mcdowell um let's focus first of all on the original one um and get perspective so what did you think about this when you saw it and um how does it hold up for you now uh, the the 1960s, 1960s version it, it, it is a masterpiece of the film, and every time I watch it, I get extremely excited. I, something about that film that draws you in. Even the music for it's beautiful. It's lovely music. We've got the music yeah. playing in the background, the uh, opening titles it's at the moment. Beautiful. It's a really good film. Um, I just thought that because um, it was directed by George Powell. Didn't George Powell direct the 1953 War of the Worlds as well? He did. Oh, there we go. He did and quite that, a few, actually. And that was another excellent film as well. And, of course, again, yes. parallel with the H.G. Wells thing. Um, so, um, yeah, I I thought it was a fantastic film. Uh, I can't remember when I saw it. It's one of those films that it's always just... I've always known. You know, I don't remember the first time I watched it. Um, but I, I just thought that... Um, Given the time it was made, 1960, um, and uh, how it was made, it was excellently done. Um... I thought the idea of a de-evolved human society splits where you've got the, the almost animalistic kind of um, e- uh, Morlocks and then you've got the, the cattle of the Eloi um, was a great idea. Um, and I think that uh, for the most part it was done well. Um, so... Tell me parts of the film that uh, you like, you remember the most out of it. Uh, the, the film that fascinates me is when he's travelling really into the far end of the future, and he's you know when he when after the nuclear war kicks off and all yeah. the molten lava and he vanishes out in the in the time machine. There is a part when he's moved when he's seen when all the wall comes down, all the lava. You see that valley and you see cities being built in the far future. There was a time when there was an advanced human society. Yes, but then again, it fell into. It felt, and I, I, it, I would have loved to have seen him stop there. He did know. He went, we just saw no, it being built up. We did see it. Yeah, we saw yeah. it built up, and then he, he continues on to yes. the point where the main part of the film is, which is quite interesting, as you say, because you see the ruins of that society, and you would have yes. thought he would have the stopped dome, there. That dome, that dome. That's right, which, of course, in yeah. the end is kind of like uh, an eating place for the Eloy later on in the film. And that great, yeah. uh, that quite, like, obelisk, that iconic thing that, uh, with a face on it is kind of yeah. like... I'd love to have seen that. And that, that they should have done that. They should have tapped yeah, that. Yeah, I would love to see that. That's what fascinated me about that. Yeah. And it, the film it is... Look, I know he's beating them all up and that, but it was the 60s and... But these people, I mean, there's a great scene where he's with that daft one with blonde hair, and they're in, he goes, Vina. can you tell me where the books are? Yeah. Because I watched this with a friend of mine, so keep rewinding this scene, and he goes up to all these books on walls, and he picks one up of knowledge, and it crumbles yeah, in right. his hands. Yeah. And he's just stood there pulling this thick expression, <laughs> and looking at him going, you've just let it all fall apart. He said, what have you done? What have you done? And he's just, he's got no concepts yeah. of anything, this dude. All he does is eat and just breed all day. It's all he's shag, shagging and eating and sat on his ass. And, and, and like, he's just going, I come from a time of men. You know, we fought. We, and uh, we created and, and we made. This. And you sit here like cattle eating your fruit and stuff and looking bored and stuff and like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was interesting. Still on furlough. That's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the you coronavirus. Um, three, uh, 480 million years of the future, and that's where we are. That's what will happen. That's when they don't find the vaccine. <laughs> but it's a great scene. Oh, a thing, and yeah. I, I think it's very powerful, that. That what's happened, all that. What, it, it, it makes you think that all the war and the building and the destruction and the evolution from where we started is highlighted in that moment Every, yeah. everything the whole history of where we're meant to be going and then we end up 
shagging and eating and sat on his ass all day and yeah. doing nothing. And also becoming farm get... animals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Being, being, anim- <laughs> being food for the Morlocks and stuff like that. And, yeah. and the, but the Morlocks were interesting, weren't they? Because they were sub- subterranean and they actually had working machinery. And on, the, on, and on this podcast, you'll hear the, the working machinery playing in the background right now. Um, but, but it was... I don't know. What do you think about the Morlocks? I, I, the Morlock thing, where the new film... I'm, I, I, uh, I don't get pumped for this, but I did like the Spielberg version. I actually did quite like it. I found that... They, that I've watched them both together, you see. Right. And I found, I found the Spielberg version. It's, it's Obviously, the 60s is the masterpiece, the original, but the uh, Spielberg one... It puts a bit more in. Now, let, let's let's focus on that a bit. To build them machines, there must have been an intelligence. In the sixties, one there must have been something intelligent. But somebody was they were somebody was building them machines and, and maintaining them. So there was something else there in that Morlock society. I, as I got older, I started to think that there was something intelligent there because they they were just too stupid. They were just like animals. But there was something in there at maintaining the machines, keeping it going. They could have, there was so much more there they could have really gone into. Whereas I think the Spielberg, I'm just like slightly so, deviant, uh, took that bit to it and I thought it was beautiful. So when you say the Spielberg version, I assume you're referring to the 2002 version. Yes, yeah, that, yes, okay, yeah. I don't know, it had Spielberg in it. Um, so let's quickly, let's focus on that a little bit as well. So um, I. I quite liked that version. I prefer the original, I have to admit that, but I do think nope, that there nope, are some nope, yeah. elements of the... I like the... Uh, now, the Morlocks were really de-evolved at that point. They're almost... They sort of running... When they ran, they all sort of rang on, sort of like their arms were partly more like legs than arms and things like that. I thought that yeah. was clever. Um, I didn't think that the... Um, who was the chief? Jer- Jeremy Irons was the Jeremy chief. Irons, wasn't it? I I thought he was I thought he was really bad in that role. I didn't think he worked at all in that particular role for some reason. Didn't Didn't you like the concept that there was behind the savagery there was like an evolved underground intelligence there that cause yeah. something had to maintain the machine. They want them. Somebody were doing it. I think or something. I, I think that the actual idea is fine, but I just think Jeremy Camps, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Camps. Jeremy um, Irons, he, he camped it all up. He, ma- he made him look, look like a uh, twirling moustache kind of uh, character. You know, he had this big... It just didn't work for me. I think the, the concept yeah. was good. Yeah. But there he, was he, 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 he messed that. it up. He fucked that up, quite frankly. Because if some guy comes from the past uh, a million years ago... And you're not going to go give him the fucking time machine and say, look, go back to the past and live your life and just get on with it, you know what I mean? And he's like, stood there. I'm thinking, well, all I've got to do, mate, is go back a couple of thousand years and erase your race. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, are you going to be that fucking stupid to give... The first thing you're going to do is take the fucking thing for yourself, right? And second thing, you're not going to let him go back to where he... Knowing that he, at some point in evolution... He's gonna turn up and screw it all up. Yeah, because you're just not gonna do it. And that that was the one thing that really annoyed me. Yeah, that, that I think that was the downfall of that film was that scene. Even though I did like the concept of an intelligence, where in the sixties one, <coughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, that there was a controlling influence. And in they, the they, they didn't sort of specify that. They were just more like. And the thing is, though, they were almost like animals, the Morlocks in the original one. So, as you rightly say, if they'd have had, like, a main head uh, Morlock, who was the intelligence yeah, who was running, yeah. the others were more like drones or something, that would have made more sense for the original. I think you're right. But, I agree about that. But you're not going to go give him keys for fucking time machine to go back, thinking, well, I'll go back to the day before this lot happened and go change it all. Yeah. Because he's got that, he's got the power, he's got that power to he's do got, that. He's literally got the power to change the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 yeah oh, go on, go all right, just fuck off back and go <laughs> on to them. <laughs> all right, yeah, fine, all right, okay. Yeah, right, then, well, I'll be nice to you, right, I've got the keys, I'm off. You know, suddenly they don't exist. And and that that's that's uh, what annoyed me about that film. But mm. the 60s one, I thought were brilliant, but there is a sequel to the 60s one. The 1970s... The oh, yes, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. There was a sequel to that. I saw something about that. It's only a ten-minute movie. Yeah, I saw it a long time ago. Was it good? I can't remember how it went. 
Uh, well, it's on the DVD. It's uh, it's the ball folder. They made it years later. Yeah, I remember they're older. Uh, I think they made it for DVD. I think, or it was some documentary. Philby's going off to war. You remember him? Yeah, Philby. Yeah, Philby, yeah, yeah. And he's in his he's in his house, and he hears his time machine. And he pops up, and he says, "Look, you know, you're going to die in the next couple of days. I've come back to stop this." come with me in the future and it won't happen and Phil be like well go he said I've got to live, you know play out what I'm going to do and he, he can't the talk and then he goes off into the future but before he says he says well I'll come back again and change his mind I've got all the time in the world that's right which he said in and the I first thought one. that was beautiful yeah I did see that he created some kind of advanced society in the future yeah you know because at the end of the 60s one he says to that Mrs what they call it Mrs Mrs. TikTok. What the, she's got a clock name, have not she? I can't remember. The, 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 well, uh, the maid, the maid, the, the, the maid. The, she's yeah, got yeah, a yeah. name. Clock. Mrs. Mrs. Does it Mrs. Templeton or something? No, it's it's Mrs. Ticket or something. It's some kind remember. of tag clock name she's got, and <laughs> I forgot what it is. But he says to her, which right end up film. He says, he says he took five books, and she said, well, which one? He said, what five books would you take to start a new society? That's right. That is beautiful. That is the defining moment of that film. Yeah, I know. Well, I, actually, I, I do like that film. And what we're going to do, we'll have to move on quite quickly now because I've only got 10 minutes recording left on this. But let me just give a quick shout out to the 1979 version, uh, which is a variant called Time After Time. Uh, it was done by MGM, MGM. It's actually directed by Nicholas Mayer from Star Trek uh, Two and Six, um, and featured Mary Steenburgen, David Warner, Malcolm McDowell. Oh, not that one. That's a classic. I, I, they, they, they made a TV version of the Time Machine, which I will send to you today. It's terrible. I saw it. Was it a recent one? And it only lasts like two episodes or something. No, no, it was a, a full movie. They made it for TVs, oh. and he's got he sat on a time platform in 1972. The recopy the story is absolute shit. All right, and I will send it to you. Thank you. Um, I don't, but I'd like to just quickly say I didn't mind the 1979 version with with um, it, it, but so it had, that yeah. Pepper. We might actually do a, we could do a, do a separate uh, show based on that one film alone. But let's let's see about that. But uh, a great uh, time travel um, sci-fi is a very very well known staple in science fiction, and I think that um, the 1961 was very very good. And um, I've liked all the versions, even time after time. So thank you for that, Martin. Right, we better. Move on. Um, do you want to do your predator, the last Predator Versus for a while? Shall we hit the jingle? Oh, can we just have a, a second silence, please? Okay. Um, shall I put Are you on saluting? The, I'm, Are you I'm, saluting? Putting, I'm putting on the last post music at the moment. <laughs> you know, right, right. The last... Let's go. Fuck it. Sacked. Okay. Here we go. They drew first blood, not me. Right, Martin. Let's go for it. Rambo, apparently. Let's go for it. Right, well, Rambo, this is this is after... Uh, well, I don't know. It's, it's Rambo 15 or whatever it is. It's Rambo's... Rambo's travelling the world, isolating himself so he doesn't have to kill people. And Rambo's... I don't know. He's in a fucking jungle somewhere because he likes living in jungle, you know. And he's in there... Uh, and uh, he's, he's, he's just trying to, because he's killed hundreds of people. And he's trying to make peace with himself, you know, balance it out with nature and this. And he's come, but he's got into the Zen lifestyle as Rambo. He's with these sort of like like jungle people that are into nature. And uh, suddenly they all start getting slaughtered, you know, you know because the predators heard, heard of this dude, you know, you know of all his adventures you know in these films. And he comes to Earth, and he's been hunting him down. He wants Rambo's head on his mantelpiece, you know. Yeah, of course. And Rambo won't kill. He's going, look, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And uh, like the predator turns up in this like template jungle where he's at peace, and they're all naked and that, and taking LSD or whatever. They're all at peace, hum all that shit. And Rambo's like suddenly Ed Ed Monk gets vaporized. And Rambo's going, don't push me. Don't push me. You know, he keeps saying that. And the Predator's doing it back to him. Don't push me, don't push me. <laughs> <coughs> and, it, and it starts... 
Pedit has got a Gatling gun laser blast that starts firing off. Rambo's like, because he's always doing them. Uh, uh, you know, like them noises. Like, he jumps. Yeah. Uh, and then he jumps. Uh, and he's like that. And suddenly, he's got this box in a room. He gets in there and it's full of fucking guns. Loads of guns. And he pulls them out, two fifty cal machine guns, and he's just stood there. You know, you got all that music where he's putting he's putting his band on his head and all that Rambo thing. And he kicks the doors open and he says, Come on then, motherfucker. You know and he just blows off two fifty cal guns you and Predator's you know like <coughs> takes a you load of it. Destroys his uh, his helmet and his laser weapon. So Predator like double blades his knife. Rambo's going, come on! So anyway, Predator goes up. Fucking big fight shums. Sticks the knife in Rambo's gut, twists it. Rambo's like, yeah, is that all you've got? Ed butts him. Turns around, Predator like falling back. Rambo's stood there going, right then. So like they're circling each other. And so they're, st- you know, still makes them grunting noise. He's doing all that. Right. And suddenly Predator tries lashing out him. Rambo kicks it right in its bollocks. It's going like, ooh! And then he smacks it on its face and then boats it up the ass. So then he pulls the grenade off his thing and drops it down the Predator's pants and pulls the pin. Rambo runs, like, you know, grunting as he's running, jumps yeah. over the thing, and the Predator blows to bits, and Rambo stands there, and all his bodies everywhere, and, you know, he's looking, he's happy. He's actually happy. But he's actually happy, because he's back doing what he's good at, and he goes, fuck all this fucking piece of shit, I'm off to go slaughter some people for the next movie, mm. and he clears off, and the Predator music kicks off. And that's it. Okay. <gasps> well, there we go. But didn't you People say... People wanted Rambo. Didn't that you was s- your fault. Well, you got it. Well, that, that's really good. But now that... If the Predator's dead, didn't you say that if he died this time, then that's the last time we'll ever do the Predator versus? Well, I'm, I'm just disappointed with him because he's lost 20 battles again. I think he needs a rest. We're going to give him a rest. And then he's going to come back in a, in a while. <laughs> He's gonna, have, he's gonna, he's gonna have a, um, a stay-at-home kind of thing. He's gonna be a stay-at-home predator kind of thing, because we've got the coronavirus on the predator home world as well. Um, and uh, we'll let him recharge his, his batteries, and then we'll bring him back in the future for some more interesting and, and don't conflict. Well, we can always start a new so a series called Pat Butcher versus. No, I don't think oh, we got. Yeah, okay. yeah, now, now we'll move no, on. No, I, th- I think I think that would be the new one for next. Week. Well, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, look, on that note, <laughs> we're gonna. Well, thank you for that. We're gonna move on to a new topic next week. That's just to say, I guess we're wrapping up. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to play the bloopers, but we'll play that very soon when we're back. We're going to uh, feature. Oh next, yeah, but it's just we're out of time. What we'll do? I forgot to tell you one thing. Go for it. It should have done it in the news. Scientists, it's on Facebook, I've lost the... Scientists apparently have discovered a parallel universe where time actually runs backwards. What? What, like uh, Red Dwarf? It was on Facebook, I had it all Oh, up. mate, it, it can you find him? Send it to me. Space, oh. I've been out, if I see it, I come across, I just, I forgot to tell you. No. That, that yep, the yep, Red yep. Dwarf. Oh, there you go. God. That's you and me doing this podcast right now in reverse. Backwards. Yeah, well, um... <laughs> oh God! Um, no, I was going to do something with us, with us talking backwards. All right, oh, go okay. on, go on. right, we're going to talk backwards for ten seconds. Okay, so um, no. here we go. Uh, Right, that's it. Go on. Okay, so we're right. now forward now, everybody. But what we were just, what you heard is us talking and singing Red Dwarf backwards. It's really weird. It only lasts for about fifteen seconds because that's too strange, I think, to do that. But I just did it anyway. Sorry, Martin. I don't know why I thought of that. That was crazy. There we go. Right, we're going to sign off now. Next week we're going to do the best of the Predator verses as this topic is finishing. So some of the favourites, including Marvin, Pat Butcher. Um, Red Dwarf, all, all those ones. We've done 25. We're going to feature about a few of the best ones and then we'll be back with our regular show the weekend after, or the week after, rather. Let's leave with a song which is called... Um, where is it? Oh, it's called Suspension by Stu Phillips. Uh, people might recognise this as the theme to that classic 80s series, um, uh, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. So, Martin, oh, yeah. thank you for that. 
Will we catch you very soon again with a Solar One Sci-Fi Podcast? Catch you later. Where am I going and what will